Dear Rump Steak, I am ever so sorry. This has been a long time coming. But I felt I must issue you an apology. I have not given you the acknowledgement that you deserve. Please accept this apology. We must make this right. Um, hi. Uh, I didn't see you there. Hmm. You've caught me at a vulnerable moment, so, um... Yeah. Well, I might as well tell you. I've felt the need to make a confession today. Um, for too long I have allowed rump steak to pass me by. Or perhaps I should take ownership of the situation I have passed rump steak by. I have been callous and inconsiderate. Poor old rump steak. It's older brothers, you know, they might be tastier and more tender, more juicy. But they are dear. Today is time to put that wrong to right. To make sure that rump steak gets the recognition that it deserves. No longer shall rump steak sit in the freezer or belong only to the cut price £8.95 Monday steak special down at the local boozer. We shall make rump steak emperor of this fridge. Uh, that fridge, sorry, over there. Or at least we shall try. Today, we cook rump steak. Now, I fear that I may not be alone in this. Many others may also have abandoned rump steak. So, this is what I say to you. Grab your nearest rump steak. They're quite easy to find. These two, less so perhaps. I wanted to give rump steak a fair chance, so today we have quality. We have the best rump steaks you can find, as far as I know. So, to give rump steak a fair chance, we have gone for a 32 day dry aged Aberdeen Angus, which looks absolutely spectacular. It is marbled and got some fat, it's got a nice thickness to it, could be delicious. And over here we have perhaps the greatest rump steak ever to have walked the planet, the 70 day dry aged Welsh black rump steak. Now let's clear something up here, I believe that what we here call rump steak over there in the USA, for example, you call that sirloin. There is obviously going to be some confusion here. This is what we call rump steak here, it's what you call sirloin there. What we call sirloin here, you call strip loin or porterhouse over there in the US of A. That's okay. Let's all be friends. Let's not let confusion get in the way. So, these uh, lovely steaks are still a bit frozen. I'm gonna head off to the gym, burn off a few of these pounds, and when you next see me, I'll be frying these little buggers up and putting them in my mouth. I could have ended that better. Anyhow, off we go. I'll see you shortly.
<laughs> All right, guys, let's crack straight on with this. I'm absolutely starving. These steaks have smelt amazing. I'm so hungry that I'm a bit shaky. So I wanna dig straight in. On this side, we've got the Welsh Black. This is the one that's aged for longer, 72 days. And on this side, we've got the Aberdeen Angus, which uh, has almost fallen apart. Let's uh, dive straight in. Smells really great, actually. I have heard people say that rump steak is really flavorful. So I'm quite excited. The smell is actually making my mouth water a lot. It's very sort of beefy, savory, delicious. Okay, let's cut this one. I'm gonna cut the end piece off. Nice. So unfortunately the steaks are of different thicknesses. That was uh, unavoidable. But, oh. They both smell great. I'd say that the more aged one smells a little bit stronger, um, but they both have the same type of smell, which is clearly the smell of rump steak. I'm gonna dig straight in here. As I said, I'm starving. I'm going to go for the Aberdeen Angus first. Let's see what rump tastes like. Well, it's quite different from sirloin and ribeye, of course. It's obviously got less intramuscular fat in general. There's a slightly more iron taste to it, which I've actually smelt on rump steak before. It's not unpleasant as such, but what I would say is that for me so far, after one bite, that rump will be ideal for having sauces, marinades, oils, and even just black pepper. Right, this one has been aged 70 days. It's a different breed, which I've not tried before. Welsh black, but I've heard amazing things. Mmm. Well, flavor is very, very similar. Okay, look, here, this, this rump on, this Aberdeen Angus rump is much rarer. In fact, that's cooked the same way that this one is cooked. So that gives us a better opportunity and between them, we now know, we'll be able to tell what medium and then rare tastes like. So this Welsh black, as I said, is rare. It is more aged, but it's not making a massive difference. There's, there's a lot of depth of flavor. It's slightly less irony. It is actually very delicious. I like to think of, um, and I spend a lot of time in France, you know, like in a French brasserie, you would get rump steak quite often. And, uh, that will be served with a salad and a vinaigrette and some French fries and some bayonnaise sauce. And that seems ideal to me because, here we go, look, you can see the, uh, you can see how this one's cooked. Okay, now that's interesting. So these two are cooked identically now, this piece and this one over here. For me, the texture is better when it's medium. So you can see that this one is medium and that's much less but it's not, none of this is chewy, but this is more tender. So I think that's an interesting compromise you'll have to make. If you have a ribeye medium, it will be very juicy. There's a lot of intramuscular fat and that will just melt perfectly when it's medium and it can be really, really juicy and I prefer ribeye that way. I find rare, when some people do order rare ribeye, for me it's just not the right way to have it. Now, rare sirloin, is, a, is better than rare ribeye and it can be quite juicy. So I, I, but I tend to prefer medium rare for sirloin. That is a really delicious flavor. It um, takes a minute to get used to it. And what I wanna do here is put some pepper. I don't actually have most of my steaks with pepper on because I just love the flavor of the steak itself. But I think that pepper will actually be a great accompaniment like it is for fillet steak. It'll be a great accompaniment for this. Mm. Oh yeah. Now that's really, really something. So, you've got a salty crust on the outside, but it's not, too, it's not so salty that you taste the salt. There's just a beautiful savory flavor. On the inside, there's beefiness with a little bit of an irony flavor, um, but it's not dominating, it's not too strong. It's, it's a clean flavor, it's, less, it's got less of a sweetness to it though than sirloin and ribeye. Then the pepper brings that little, obviously, sort of heat kick and sharpness 
that actually makes it perfect. Mm. So definitely having your rump steak rare means it will be more chewy. Um, it's not very, very chewy. There's no gristle in there or anything like that to be chewing through. But it just hasn't sort of had a chance to, to break down enough when it's rare. So for me, that's not how I would have it. Either medium rare or for me, even medium like this one. Mm. Everything comes together then when you have it like that. I can see that peppered rump steak will be something worth doing actually. Here are my thoughts as I go through this steak. It's definitely a great alternative price wise to sirloin steak. It's closer to sirloin steak than it is to ribeye steak. I'm sure some of you will comment and say that none of them are alike. I'm just trying to give a comparison so that people who've never tried it can really understand more of what's happening. It has got a different texture completely to those cuts. It's not going to be as tender in general. Uh, there's a sort of fleshiness to it because there's less fat in there to sort of allow the meat to fall apart. But it isn't chewy by any means. Its flavour is different from them. It's more, you can taste the, like, the sort of blood a little tiny bit. Uh, it's not unpleasant, but as I said, it would really go well with a sauce. For me, it would be like garlic, shallots, oil, thyme. Um, that would be wonderful. And a little bit of vinegar. The difference in ageing between 72 days and 32 days for these two steaks hasn't made a massive amount of difference. The Welsh black tastes delicious. Uh, let's give it another go. And give the Aberdeen Angus another go, the rare one. Interesting, I would say that the Aberdeen Angus, <clears throat> although ageless, is slightly my favorite. It's got slightly more flavor when it's rare compared to this when this is rare. Sorry, the pepper's going up my nose. So I would say you could have these from rare through to medium. I don't think there's gonna be enough juiciness if you go to medium well. I do think you're better off at medium rare and medium to rare, but if you really like rare steak, it's certainly pretty good still. These steaks from Farmerson, the online butcher in the UK where I got them, are really very good. They've been aged well. They've obviously been reared well. They're both great breeds of cow. My preference would be for the Aberdeen Angus. I think overall, its price and quality ratio is slightly better. It's got a wonderful flavor to it. I really like the texture. I think actually that, um, so these two pieces are cooked very similarly. I think that the texture of the Aberdeen Angus is a little bit more tender. Mm. Mm. You know, the more I'm eating this, I'm, I'm making me think, you know, shouldn't really compare it to any other cut. It is its own cut. And, you know, as I was saying at the beginning of this video, I haven't really given it a chance before. But now I could see that I would actually look forward to having a really great rump steak, that it offers something different, a bit of variety. Here are the reasons I would pick this over more expensive sirloin and ribeye and even fillet. I would pick this if I want to do a casual lunch. I would pick this if it's a weekday dinner and I don't want to spend too much money. I'd pick this if I really fancy drenching the steak in something with vinegar and shallots and oil and garlic. I think that works really well with this. Just got to keep eating it. It's quite yummy. Gonna put some good olive oil out here. Rump steak, I hope all is forgiven. I've given you a good shot. You definitely made it onto my list of steaks that I will eat in future. Um, these have been wonderful, great quality steaks, delicious flavor, not anything wrong with their texture at all. They're probably, I think they're probably archetypal rump steaks in that respect. You know, you've got to know what you're going for when you go for a rump steak. You're not trying to replicate another cut of steak. I think this can stand on its own as a great, slightly less expensive, but equally interesting and flavorsome cut really does take other flavours so well. They don't dominate the flavour of this, of this rump steak, but they just add to it. It becomes more and more mouth-watering the more I'm adding a little bit of pepper here and there, dipping it in this really flavoursome olive oil. 
and it just makes a perfect mouthful every time. I don't need to wash it down with red wine. I don't necessarily need potatoes to go with it or something with vinegar in it to add flavor. Just overall, it's a really great canvas for other flavors whilst adding some of its own beefy, rich, delicious, savory flavor. Mm. I'll be honest with you, I was thinking that I was gonna sit here and either have to pretend that I liked it. To be honest with you, I was sitting, I was, to be honest with you, before I um, sat down to eat, I thought, you know, it's gonna be the first steak where I say I don't like it. I've held this prejudice against rump steak for no reason, really. You know, if I fancy a sirloin or a ribeye, I have to have a sirloin or a ribeye. But the chances are now that occasionally I'll also fancy a really good rump steak like this. And that's great, just more variety, slightly less expensive. All right guys, thanks for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, uh, please consider subscribing if you like this sort of content. Um, I try lots of different steaks, different ways of cooking them, and um, you know, you watch me eat them and I'll tell you what they're like, basically. Um, moving forward, we're going to do different formats of videos more often. Um, but at the moment, I think it's still interesting to work my way through so many different types of steaks. So if you like that sort of thing, please subscribe. If you like this video, get, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And uh, if you've got something to say, let me hear it below. Thanks for watching. So what do you guys think of rump steak? Is it something that you eat often? Um, do you enjoy it? Have you got any particular way of cooking it that you like? Please let me know. I've got some more in the freezer. I'm interested in doing more videos about it. I think that it's a wonderful cut of steak because more people will definitely be able to afford great quality rump steak than to afford you know, eating lots of ribeye and sirloin steak or strip loin, uh, New York strip, you might call it in America, I think. So in that respect, it's a, I think it's a wonderful cut. That it can be so flavoursome and yet be fairly less expensive.